What's good? Y'all can already see by the title what we reacted to. Uh, I just asked if y'all knew. Make sure you hit that like. Send this to a friend. Send this to an uncle. Send this to an auntie. Send it to somebody, you know what I'm saying, that's relevant. But we trying to grow something here. You know what I'm saying? Join the CG game. I'm definitely not going to hold y'all this long in the video. You know what I'm saying? Just I appreciate you if y'all just hit that like and yeah, sub so, but you know what I'm saying? Let's go to the video. An artist that no one wants anything to do with. A tale of how friends became ops. What you're about to see is the reason behind the deadly falling out of Mimo 600 and OTF. Damn. The story of First of all, why the fuck? Just shit together, YouTube. An artist that no one wants anything to do with. A tale of how friends became ops. Damn. What you're about to see is the reason behind the deadly falling out of Mimo 600 and OTF. A deadly falling out? Damn. The story of Mimo 600 and OTF began on the streets of Chicago. Specifically, okay. the south side of the Windy City. And before becoming a member of OTF, Mimo was a member of the 600 Gang, a set which belonged to the 60th Street and South King Drive. This is the trenches of Chicago. This is a gang started by D Thang and his best friend, Lil Boo, and is made up of Black Disciples and Gangster Disciples members. Other early really? members of the group include LA Capone, Rondo Number no. 9, Tay 600, E Day, C Day, Inky D. Breezy and Booker. Some of these gang members started focusing on something different in the latter parts of 2010. This was the time when Chicago drill scene was on the rise. Chief Keith had already taken the industry by storm, and an Inglewood rapper already had a foot in the door. Sure Lil Durk and his brother OTF. I, yeah, he he paved the way for all the rap, all even drill rappers now, bro. He paved the way, bro. People don't want to give him his respect where he's due, but that's crazy. Dirk and his brother belonged to the 300 Black Disciples set. This group had always been allied with the 600 gang. Some members of 600 include Rondo Number no. 9, L.A. Capone, and Tay 600 had begun rapping at this time. This made the 600 gang even more popular and gained new members. Mimo 600 and his younger brother joined the gang in early 2011. And it was during this period that Mimo 600 began rapping. However, while drill music shined a new light on Chicago, it was also a very dangerous time on the streets of Chirac. This was a period of gang wars that led to the death of many young, talented men. In September of 2011, 600 suffered two losses that would change the group forever. D Thang, the founder of 600, was shot on September 13th, and Lil Steve, who was just 15 years old when he was killed on September 16th. Lil Steve, Stephen McGee, and just like many members of the 600 gang, he was also a member of the Black Disciples. Although he was just a teenager, Lil Steve was quite popular, and he was one of the most loved members of 600. He was three blocks away from home when he was shot in 2011. What's even more interesting about his death is that, according to police documents, while Lil Steve was walking, a man on a bike approached him and warned him that a couple of men were strapped and waiting for him in the alley, like a sort of premonition about his death, but he wasn't able to act on it. Almost immediately after he was warned, a 14-year-old popped out and fired multiple shots at him. One of the bullets also hit him in the head. Little Steve was yeah. rushed to the hospital, but he was later pronounced dead later that day. The 600 gang renamed their Steve Drive to honor Lil Steve. But during this period, Mimo 600 wasn't a full-time rapper. He was still focused on the streets. Rapping was just a thing he did as a hobby. And he didn't realize his first official song until August of 2016. By this time, some 600 members such as L.A. Capone, Rondo No. 9, Just Blow 600, and Book of 600 were already working with OTF. The success of some of Mimo's singles made him start to take rap seriously. That was when he became a full-time rapper. And in 2019, Dirk's brother D Thing signed Mimo to OTF. When D Thing signed Mimo 600 to OTF, it was seen as a wise business decision for both parties. Everyone okay. felt Mimo was the next rapper to blow from Chicago, and OTF was just the right platform for him to begin his career. And the success of the remix of the song Exposing Me was proof to everyone that Mimo's career was on the right track. But all that changed in November 2020. Rapper King Von has died at the age of 26 after being shot in Atlanta, Georgia. The Atlanta Police Department tells people that the rising rapper and two others died in a shooting incident on Friday morning. Less than 10 days after releasing his that day was album, crazy, King bro. Von was shot after getting into an altercation outside a nightclub in Atlanta. He was rushed to the hospital, but he died hours after he arrived. The death of King Von would add a major impact on Mimo 600's career. Von was one of the few OTF members who got along well with Mimo, and Von was perhaps one of the two reasons why Mimo wasn't fully sidelined in the group earlier. He and Von were closer than he and Dirk were. They had a chemistry that can't be denied, and this was evident on the Exposing Me song that they did together. This is why Mimo only ever speaks about King Von in glowing terms. How was King Von off the camera? You know, the camera got him, you know, it's so, so away on camera. 
Mm-hmm. Same way on camera. Same way on camera. Same way on camera. No difference. He wouldn't even know the camera was rolling. Right. But it'd be a whole movie, a whole video shoot. He wouldn't even know another video. He did have fun moments. The internet kind of always Silly. seemed to pick up his aggressiveness. He did have fun. That's because that's what they looking at. That's how he came out. Is, but they don't know the other side. And I'm like, you know, cool. The loss of King Vaughn put a ticking time bomb on OTF and Mimo's relationship, but it was the shooting the D-Thing that tipped the scales. Just like Vaughn, D-Thing was shot outside a nightclub. He was hit in the head and died right on the spot. Remember, yeah, it was D-Thing who signed Mimo to OTF. Unfortunately for Mimo, his other label boss was never a big fan of his. Dirk was never really sold on Mimo. Compared to his label mates King Vaughn and Booker 600, Mimo gotten very little promotion from his label. Vaughn and Booker both have songs with Dirk, but Mimo doesn't. The only time Mimo had been on the same song with Dirk was an OTF song that had all other members on it. And Mimo himself confirmed that he felt OTF didn't push him enough in an interview. Mim, I think you taking this shit serious. I think, me personally, Mim, I think you big, but I do think you should be way, way I'm big. underrated. I wasn't pushed enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. You think that's what it was? Just yeah. to have that, that, that right push? I know that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a label, you would sign a deal, though? A label yeah, came to you? Yeah, it album deal. However, after the unfortunate incident that led to D-Thang's death, it was just a matter of time before their rocky relationship came to an end. After the death of D-Thang, Mimo's relationship with OTF was truly hanging by a thread. He wasn't being promoted by the label and his career was just stuck. Oh wow, W fucking ass. Do you want This brought about the talk about whether Mimo was better off as an independent artist. This is because Mimo was doing quite well for himself before he was signed. Ever since signing with the label, his career made little to no progress. And it felt like as long as Dirk was in charge of OTF, Mimo was never gonna blow under the label. But the situation got even worse when Mimo's OTF chain went missing. Especially because one of the ops, TTB Nez, was seen flaunting the chain on an Instagram video. And well, no one gonna end well for whoever owned the chain. Who don't got they fucking piece? The piece is missing. It's a fucking piece missing. And we did, we did not go to Shan. It's a piece missing. It's a piece missing. We want to know what's going on. Adam, Yo, thought him in this bitch. Right, don't care. <laughs> Somebody do not got their juice. TTB Nez is a rapper who had beef with various members of 600, such as Breezy, LA Capone, and Tech 600. He had even mocked the death of several of their members. So when he was seen with their chain, it was pretty embarrassing for the OTF crew. This is because jewelry has become quite significant in the rap game, and almost every modern rapper has a custom-made chain, and OTF is no different. The OTF chain is like a badge of honor for every member. For the 600 members that joined OTF, they all got a chain that was specifically made for them. Rather than just another OTF piece, the chain also paid homage to 600 because it also said 600 boy forever. Mimo claims that his chain was stolen, and some reports state that Mimo's cousin might have played a role in him losing his chain. And wow. Mimo more or less confirmed the speculation when he said, it's one thing getting caught lacking, but for a motherfucker to set you up, it's some pure snake shit. Especially a motherfucker with you saying bloodline. Dudes do anything for clout and show you they only love you when it's beneficial. Getting your chain snatched is one of the worst things that could ever happen to a rapper. Especially a gangster rapper that raps about that life. It's a clear sign of disrespect, not only for the rapper, but also for his group. And that's why Dirk was supposedly pissed about this situation. He made his opinion clear from his lyrics on French Montana song, Stick in the Jungle. Dirk rapped, you said they stole your chain, you lied, they took it. But that wouldn't be the only time that Mimo would have his chain taken from him. When Mimo had his chain snatched for the second time, it wasn't by TTB Nez or another one of his ops. This time his chain was taken by someone from OTF, THF Zoo. Tell Mimo 600, bring his bitch ass in here so I can holler at him. Oh, that's what you mad about? Yeah, that was for you, Mimo. You know what's going on. You ran, nigga. THF Zoo is one of the most feared members. Whoa, of the God He's damn, gone to jail for bro. Various types of charges. He's well respected on the streets of Chirac, and you can say that he does live up to the THF in his name, which means Trigger Happy Family. Now, no one is sure why or how THF Zoo took Mimo's chain, but there's a rumor flying around that Dirk might have something to do with it. Several sources state that this might be because Lil Dirk has had enough of Mimo's online antics, one of which 
was his beef with the baby. After Baby and NBA Youngboy released their collaborative mixtape Better Than You on the same day as Vaughn's posthumous album, Mimo 600 had something to say about it. He tweeted, Can't blame the baby. He thought that man was gonna save his career. We all know the baby isn't the type to be dissed and say nothing about it. He replied by going at the entire OTF crew. He claimed that Dirk wanted no smoke and it was waving the white flag in his DM after which he pretty much insinuated that Dirk can't control his voice. This was a pretty embarrassing scenario for OTF, and Dirk allegedly decided to do something about it. Word on the street is that Dirk called Mimo and told him they had to settle their issues with a fight because he's being embarrassed in OTF. Although Mimo was initially reluctant to show up, he eventually went for the bout with his homies. The situation escalated to a point in which guns were being pulled. Nemo's wow. homies were allegedly beaten while he found a way to escape, but not without losing his chain. Mimo put a tweet denying that they took his chain from him, but another 600 member, Shark and Land, also claimed that Mimo had his chain taken from him. After this incident, Mimo since come out to confirm that he is no longer part of OTF. Ever since then, Mimo almost signed with WAC 100. However, WAC revealed on Clubhouse that one of the reasons he didn't sign Mimo was because Chief Keith told him not to. And when Mimo Damn, they this, own him, bro. Back on social. Many fans are surprised that Mimo 600 did try to sign with WAC 100 because of WAC's relationship with 6ix9ine. And we all know about how 6ix9ine has continuously trolled Lil Durk and mocking King Von death. So do you think Mimo 600 is responsible for his fallout with OTF? Or could Lil Durk have handled the situation a little better? Share your thoughts with me in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. To be honest, I don't know how to answer that. You know why? I don't know how to answer that, bro. If y'all enjoyed this video, make sure y'all slap that like button for more reactions like this. You know what I'm saying? Shit boy Mally, y'all stay cool. It's possible.